Welcome, Niels. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> so, yeah, I invited you for this conversation so we can explore this inner landscape of transformation. And you've been uh, circling now, must be near 10 years. Is that right? Well, I, well, I can tell you the exact beginning because um, I... Uh, recently looked it up it was a three-day circling event here in Amsterdam called Aletheia with a bunch of the founders I think from the US and it was around this time of year in uh, 2013 so okay. 11 years and counting wow wow so I've been circling longer than I thought as well <laughs> <laughs> and yeah and you've really taken the practice further and you've become a yeah a competent leader and you've you're a senior leader here at circling europe and like most people who have taken this practice far enough that they can then guide others they've usually been on quite a journey and yeah i wanted to yeah explore that with you um, mm. and the i think the place I'd like to start is like what what was it about the practice or or what was it that drew you or like yeah what was the fire yeah it's actually it's actually quite a uh quite an interesting story um so when i when i went to this Alethea uh thing i had just returned to the netherlands from two and a half years of traveling uh, mm -hmm. Living abroad in in West Africa, uh, then moving to Spain with my then uh, partner, etc. So I just arrived back in the Netherlands, and one thing that really struck me, sort of with this bird's eye view of like having returned to my homeland, is like how cold people were on the street, and like how how little uh, interaction there were there was between like people on the street, and particularly with Senegal, the 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 difference was like was like stunning and. Somehow it hit me. It's like, wow, we're really there's really something here where people just don't know how to how to be with each other, and and that must then include me. And then somewhere online, I found on on Facebook actually, I found this um, the announcement of this of this particular event, and I was like, it it really mentioned connection, like in like human to human connection as the centerpiece, and it was like somehow somehow it drew me because at that point i'd I'd been sort of on the you know quote unquote spiritual path for um yeah a, a number of years, and all these practices were always um were always about about going inward but on your own right like so you know I did say um Zen meditation course it's like okay, you sit on your pillow and you know but it's you and you right. Or I went, I went into yoga, and then it's you on your mat, and of course there's others, but basically it's you and you. Or you know, you try ayahuasca, and it's like, okay, so here's here's the medicine, and then you're on your pillow, and it's you and the universe, right? And so it was really the first time ever that I found uh, a practice uh, that, um, yeah, that had connection with other people as the centerpiece and and that's uh, from the beginning that that sounded so logical to me um because you know as i learned later <clears throat> it's like all your trauma essentially most of it anyway but maybe maybe all your trauma actually you know comes from relating basically you know your parents and all that uh, and so how do you heal it also through you know relating and then another piece there was that you know, I I struggled with depression, right? And and this is like sort of a, a container term, I think, for for you know many things, amongst others, uh, a loneliness, right? Like just a deep loneliness and not knowing in Amsterdam, like you know where to find people and on all these things. And now all of a sudden, you know, there's this practice where where people people gather, first of all, you know, with with this with this intention of like really. Um, yeah, really connect, right? And then the story, it's a bit of a bit of a detour to come to the story, but I went to this Aletheia thing and one of the first practices I recall uh, they asked us to do was basically make two rows of people and then and then just eye gaze, like for, I don't recall, like a minute or so, right? Eye gaze 
and then share the experience and then and then swap partners and i i fucking lost it sean like i like i literally like my I, my i got sweaty like armpits and my hands were like i was just all this like you know, turmoil in my system, like fucking, I want to flee in this, ah, oh, so uncomfortable, right? And afterwards, I was sitting down, it's like, this is, this is, this is really strange because all they've asked me to do is, is nothing, like just stand there and, and look at someone. And here I am, like my whole system is just boiling, basically. And, and that was a really, I think, uh, I think, strong example of like how much. How much relational trauma there was like stored in my in my system, and and how easily that was actually activated through you know the simplest of uh, yeah of exercises, right? Yeah, well, simple, but I mean, wasn't it Rumi or someone that said like the eyes are the gateway to the soul? So like, if you do a practice where you look into each other, and I also remember being a boy and like. There was always something, as soon as there was somehow a little bit more eye contact or somehow more connection, it was so awkward. Like it was so Mm. unusual to experience that heightened sense of connection. And that's always what's so wonderful when you fall in love with someone, that you've got a context where it's okay just to like, just stare at each other (laughs) for like an extended period of time because you just don't get that with anyone else. And yeah. And the, the other thing you said, though, actually was was quite a revelation for me because it was like, I remember going on a 10-day Vipassana retreat. I think you've done the same. And it's like, it's the, the interesting thing is, is they're like, okay, to go really deep, we have to like, you have to come to this place where it's quiet. You, you're not allowed to interact or talk to others because that's so intense. We've got to keep it out so you can actually get somewhere and and i know what they mean because it it it's a special kind of practice so it's not a criticism of that but actually there's something about circling which i think fits this modern era where people are much more like no where like where is the biggest transformation or like where's the most intensity like can't we go towards that and so it's like, well, if we're taking that bit out of the meditation, like what happens if we bring it into the meditation and then and then we're actually getting to meditate on what's most stimulating and like you say, is often like got the most connection to trauma, but also to the pleasure and the heightened experiences of being in connection. Yeah, hundred percent. And and I think an an extra or uh yeah in, in in addition to that is that uh i know for myself and i've seen i've seen this in you know countless people by at this point is that language uh can also very easily be employed as a as a as a defense mechanism or as a coping strategy so if i feel very uncomfortable in in a certain setting with somebody else or other people i'll just start rambling to be to be a hundred percent honest with you, I could I could even notice it now. It's like oh, it's the beginning of this sort of interview type stuff, and I might I might actually like you know mm. talk a lot and get very enthusiastic, and and yes, that's you know naturally me, and it's also I also know it to be a way of like you know not not going going full, fully open or something, right? Mm. Um, and so for me, that was also. Uh, a, a sort of a very critical piece in in circling, particularly uh, in that Alethea that I mentioned, that three day uh, event. I, I got birthday circled for the first time, uh, and this this precisely happened. At some point, the leader uh, basically said, "Hey, I think you know, would you would you like to be silent for a little bit, right?" And and it really struck me as like, oh. And and we went silent. And that's when all the tears came, and when like like had this huge release of like pent up uh, stress, mm. or you know, the first time in circling where where I had really had a catharsis. Uh, mm. But it it happened when when I was invited into into like being silent with others. Mm. And and you said about noticing that even right now, you're like it seems like you're kind of self-aware of like oh yeah what kind of state am I in or like Mm -hmm. is my talking connected to the kind of nervousness of the situation 
yeah. when you're also remembering these early experiences like what are you noticing now like being here uh <laughs> yeah so fairly active heart uh, so i could i could like without touching it i could i could feel it like like you know thumping in my my chest um which which tells me i think there is there is a like a mild level of, of nervousness uh, and and not to sort of put that in in necessarily in a negative uh, corner because you know it it also produces like a certain alertness or like a, like a like i feel also very quite playful and really sort of here and alive and all that mm. um but i can also like naming what i just named and like yeah it, there's this this conscious piece where I like Neil, you know, it's okay to like you know talk twenty percent slower or like breathe a couple times and and let Sean you know let Sean talk or 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 create you know maybe even a, a shared silence for a bit and just rest in that you know in that shared mm. shared space. That, that, I think resting is a is a is an amazing quality that I've really found in circling that. There's almost nothing as beautiful, I think, as resting in presence together. Yeah, I get I get the truth chills as I say that here in the back of my neck, which is one of the things that I've I've that I've developed over the years. Is like, yeah, now if I speak truth, it's like really my the back of my neck is electric. It sounds like as you become more present here, you're like looking at these subtle signals of your body, like the nervousness chills that tell you that something more truthful is coming out yeah. things you've cultivated by yeah practicing and, yeah and it sounded like just a bit that stood out to me is when you experience the nervousness you you recognized it and then you were like oh yeah but i don't necessarily relate to that as like negative it's like that can also be a way of like awakening or alivening me so it's Seems like you've got nuance there around what it is you're sensing. Mm. Mm. I mean, you know, circling is is well, we call it an embodiment practice, right? And then they they have one of these words that you know gets uh, gets gets sort of overused or flung around uh, in in sort of developmental circles all the time. Embodiment, embodiment, embodiment. But what well, what does it mean? What does embodiment mean, right? And in the context of what we're exploring now, for me, it has meant over the years is like an, an ever increasing sensitivity to my own inner landscape, to my own experiences moment to moment. And like, I think for me, the best metaphor, uh, and I, I've, I've used it since the beginning and it's still there, is like, it's thawing. Like, mm. what used to be frozen is now sort of has. Yeah, it's, it's has thawed or is still thawing, and and now all these sensations are available, and like there's this, like oh my god, you know, and and it's also sometimes challenging because, uh, you know, the the increased sensitivity also means that some that I'm I'm less you know capable of dealing with like intense stimuli, for example, like being in a full bar with drunk people is like just kind of kind of can't do it anymore, and and. Sometimes being in the world is is in that sense a little more challenging, maybe. Um, but yeah, definitely like a, an ever increasing sensitivity in my my bodily sensations. I like how you said it in terms of it being a thawing. Like um, when when I first came in contact with the practice, it wasn't so established then. It was like there was a few people kind of really able to embody it and they were kind of could access them on the internet and stuff and I was amazed by it but one thing one of them said was when you start to do this kind of practice relationally it's like you've got to clean the drains out or like the pipes the pipes in your system are kind of slightly clogged up from years of not being contacted and expressed and although yeah. that that metaphor made sense it gives a sense of like when your drains are blocked up, it's not blocked up with good stuff, and it's like you, you want it, it's it smells and it's not good. Whereas what I've experienced actually from circling is when we get in contact with what's there, be it sadness or anger or even like despair or like aching or 
it's there's something about contacting it that feels like coming into more intimacy with life or and it's all got its own wisdom so it's like nothing feels like it's waste or 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 something wrong or so that yeah, yeah. I like that saying with the thawing it's like releasing the what's actually already there and it's it's also good in there yeah i mean 100 percent. like uh like in a way nothing to add to what you just said um I think there's almost like what I've seen in myself, and I think I think this is quite common, or at least I've I've seen it in you know encircling over and over, is that the first the first sort of things that people experience once they you know let's call it thaw uh, are usually these these is sadness, it's 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 uh, you know anger, it's all this stuff that is sort of pent up and and repressed, but then beyond that. There are all these more, even more like for me, challenging uh, states like, you know, the void or feeling absolutely empty or, uh, or, or despair and hopelessness. And these, these, these states that are, mm-hmm. um, yeah, are, are really like difficult to be with. And, and it makes a lot of sense now, like how, for me anyway, like how prevalent uh, addiction is in the world, because, you know, people will do anything to to just not be with that you know th- this saying like you know all the problems in the world are uh are a result of man's inability to sit alone with himself in a room um uh, or together maybe in a room you know when we talk yeah. about circling but um but yeah like be really be with the full you know spectrum of uh of feelings and, and states and th- these are all like like part of it and the thing like I've I had many like like puzzle, you know puzzle piece click uh, moments, but one was like, if I am to fully access my own aliveness and my own you know uh, connection to source and my own love, that's actually in the same spot in the same place as also this hopelessness and this it's all it's all basically coming from the same well, and therefore I I you know my my journey is descending if you will you know that well and like like look around and, and always just accept what what i'm encountering there's this radical acceptance piece right like doesn't matter what i'm experiencing i'm experiencing something and that that is that is my truth right now and you know can i share that with you yeah as you share this what i noticed that happening in me is i started to experience like the the feelings inside of me that I'm accessing now and something slightly shifted in my attention where it was like rather than slightly looking for something or slightly kind of judging the experience of like oh this is a bit uncomfortable or this I can't feel much here it was more like okay I'm willing to experience it even if it is like a sense of lack of feeling or uncomfortable feeling so just a slight sense of more welcoming and it's so paradoxical that as soon as that awareness comes in it's like yeah everything is heightened actually ironically when it's allowed to be what it what it is even if it's dull it's like yeah and and then the intimacy that comes from that yeah it's it's one of the many you know, deep, deep paradoxes that that one encounters. I think when, yeah, when like when circling and you know going down that rabbit hole, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you talked about some of the challenging experiences. I wonder if you could say more about like some of the personal kind of trials you've kind of navigated in your time with the practice and. I mean, in your overall journey of transformation. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> yeah, I, th- I think first thing comes up at the beginning, you know, the first years, it, w- it was just often, you know, the, the, the very act of, of circling was often deeply challenging because so much stuff, uh, yeah, came up for me. And particularly, 
Well, I think I think you know coming back to this metaphor of of, of freezing and thawing. I think I think uh, my mom passed away when I was seventeen, uh, very very rapidly to a sort of aggressive form of brain cancer. And looking back on it, that was such a, a sort of traumatic, overwhelming experience. I think that a lot of the f- like freeze happened there, and like you know circling and connecting and and. Uh, being in these spaces over and over, like deeply brought me in, into uh, into connection with, like reliving, you know, that whole period of time and like piece by piece by piece, discovering like fuck, actually, actually, it was one one big di- dissociation. And to to an extent, I think I could now make the case that between seventeen and say twenty five, when I uh, when I got depressed for the first time, and maybe even longer, like maybe even until. 30 something when when i discovered circling i i i lived in in a <clears throat> uh in dissociated state to a certain to a certain degree pretty much pretty much always actually which is then in itself a super painful realization at some point it's like fuck i might have or very scary like am i i'm, I'm actually not connected to to myself to and, and but then how disconnected am I? And then you're all of a sudden you're in this in this inner reality that is very sort of disorienting, right? Like the first, mm-hmm. at least the dissociation had a certain you know a certain form to it or a certain you know logic. And now all of a sudden I have no idea who I am and like what how how deep is this you know this well that I talked about? And like there's a lot of uh, yeah, I think disorientation is a, is a, is a good uh, good word um, for what I experienced at the beginning a lot. Yeah, yeah, and it it reminds me of like the Matrix, like where in in the first one, <clears throat> it's like I mean he goes through pretty big ordeals, but he gets to that point where he's like, oh, it's all the Matrix, and he's like stopping bullets with his hand, and he's like beating up the <laughs> agents without even putting any effort in and and it's like oh yeah i'm free it's all it's all connected it's all but then actually you come to the second matrix and it's like how for a second this is not simple the, mm. the oracle is she, she's part of the machine like yeah and, yeah and morpheus is he actually all here like and and zion this place of that's supposed to be amazing it's kind of cold and mechanical and like and that's yeah. what it's like when we come more in contact with ourselves. Like I really remember the the vulnerability and the, the disorientation. Like because we can say it now, like oh yeah, dissociation. Now we've experienced it. But when you experience that for real, that you discover that in yourself, and there's a way your your being is splitting, like the life force or cutting you off from like sensory information which is giving you real life meaning and and signals and direction and that's slightly cut off and the process of it reconnecting isn't often comfortable because it there's quite a a reconnection process that's required and that's also disorienting so it's yeah and uh, yeah i mean again fully agreed and then but on top of it is like is like the grieving process of 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 sort of time lost or like in my case you know relationships relationships fucked up right like where this it really hit me like a freight train like for a while like man i'm i'm just not able uh to to really like let let a romantic partner for example mm. come close and 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 i i just couldn't make relationships work and and the, the the sheer amount of, of pain and and suffering and and like turmoil for me but also for the for the for the ladies involved you know it was just really like really a grieving process uh which then sort of is is almost like i said an extra layer on top of the the disorientation or or um confusion that's already happening yeah and and then there's also the the ungrieved grieving that you contact and when yeah. you were sharing that like when you did your your kind of deeper dive training you 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 because we were already 
we already had a click so we were kind of friends already and, and he knew John well and and so we actually ended up doing the training in your yeah. <laughs> kind of apartment kind of building and and we had the whole floor to kind of and that was quite an experience but that because we were in your room I remember you know we had a group quite a big group of us actually I think there was around 28 of us and there was a picture of you and your mother and and you're like a, a a baby in the picture and the way she's looking at you is that amazing way mums look at their young ones it's like you know the way my wife looks at my daughter it's got that same energy it's so uh opening to to witness that but, but there you were like getting in touch with this grief and there was this picture and I just remember just being with you like feeling that heartbreak with you I mean it moved me to deep tears so I can't imagine like how intense it was for you but um yeah, yeah that yeah, there's a lot to say. I think about about that SES, that particular SES that we um, that we did indeed uh, decide to hold in my you know my then house. And um, <laughs> yeah, we've talked about this uh, about this before, right? Like the, what we call now the sort of the the Wild West days of of circling when you know we yeah we just did stuff like that and um, that element of like uh, of me and my mom and like being seen uh by others in in yeah what what might be my like my deepest grief in a way like like obviously super transformational and and super um yeah like like rich right like it's just you could almost like like taste it now if you if you think about like being let in by somebody else you know in their deepest you know grief and like the shared humanity that then evolves and like how it how it ripples through a room and like everybody gets gets to feel their own deepest pain and like you know this sort of yeah the we space that then starts like dancing and morphing and like everybody going into that's where where these heightened states then i i experienced for the first time right um but then also as you recall you know there was this other this other piece where um, I'm not sure if, how clear it was for you guys, but one one thing that was really challenging for me is that people started making noise, right? And I got so afraid of like the neighbors uh, noticing. Uh, and at some point, really, somebody really screamed for a while, and one neighbor did come up, and and she thought somebody was was being, you know, beat up or something. And I had to sort of manage mm -hmm. that, and I had this whole sort of, yeah, like. Um, process around like i i imagined the police coming and i was like at the same time questioning like why am i why am i imagining all this sort of dooms you know all, all these doom scenarios right and so that was an, a whole other piece of like having having all these people in my you know in my space this sense of like responsibility and so yeah there was there was so much uh so much there in these uh in these gatherings and yeah and that like you say that was in the early days so there was it was more pioneering yeah. it was more yeah. we were finding the boundaries and like so it was and there was less understanding of the depth of like like to really work with deep trauma and to really get in contact with the, the really core subtle life force it actually rarely does need a dramatic shouting screaming cathartic experience actually it requires actually a more nuanced and you know, usually a slower more present kind of process but yeah in the early days yeah people were finding their way and like yeah it wasn't always easy to now to guide people away from what they had learned around the, like needing to get it out which often if I'm trying to get something out that obviously is I don't want it to be there. So that's already a non-acceptance, which is usually required to reintegrate the deep totally. deep parts of us. Yeah. Yeah, in in another in another course, um, primal therapy, uh, you might have heard of it. Yeah. This I really clearly saw this. It's like uh there they call it acting out. So people start screaming and, and trying to sort of almost exercise uh something. 
which is then actually moving them away from from the what's almost almost always like a shattering pain you know the likes of like i have no idea what i'm doing here in the world or, or like i being in this mm. human body is just like you know it's almost like a, always a, a three-year-old child or a four-year-old child like having having like no idea what the fuck's going on that's the actual core of it and then the the acting out is is almost yeah, a way of like moving away from that in a yeah. in an attempt to get there so yeah fully fully agreed and you know what comes to mind as well is that like circling is is what 15 years old or or, or something like along those lines yeah, it's 15, it's relatively 20, yeah no yeah, it's so like it's 20 a, 24 5 years yeah. that's a relatively like young practice and yeah. and like if i if i if i see sort of you know circling europe and the journey you know you guys have been on or we've been on it's like so much of course has been learned and yeah. I also look back on it to be honest with you, Sean, like with warmth, like how like you and John, like how, how absolutely fascinated you guys were with this practice, you know, where like, you know, circle something and oh now it's one thirty AM, but you know, we <laughs> kinda of forgot we kinda, of, you know, forgot like time. Yeah. Because because what the fuck, you know, we're Yeah. And yeah. It, that that discovery was so enthralling for me because I I've I mean, I was doing a lot of therapy and meditation before. I was also a scholar, so I was like learning all the kind of deep maps of human experience. But it was like I never thought I'd come across a practice where I got to hang out with people I wanted to hang out with and we got to have meaningful interactions. So that was already like a big gift. Yeah. But then yeah. there was this other gift that I was like in the territory that all these books were talking about but I was actually in there and, and like being in there with others. And, and it's not like you're doing it like to heal, you're doing it to explore connection. So you like want to be there together and it's meaningful. But then I was like discovering all this stuff and it was like, oh yeah, it's not quite like you imagine when you're reading it. It's like, there's an aliveness, there's an intimacy, there's like a otherworldliness to our inner experience. It's really powerful. And, and even like when you talked about grief, I, I remember the experience of, and it, it, I mean, I imagine the meeting with you as part of this. It was like seeing in myself and seeing in others this way, this deep grief. And when you feel it, it's like, you can almost feel that boy I was. It's like the almost the atmosphere, the emotional atmosphere I was then. It's like you start to live inside of that like a movie. But and a movie is a good example because you don't feel as kind of completely lost and confused as that child did because you've still got a bit of your adult consciousness, but you are also kind of vulnerably in that experience. Yeah. But then, like I saw that where like what was so hard about feeling the grief was not only the intensity of the feeling, which is like if you didn't understand it you you might go to hospital because you're like what the hell's happening in my chest and like why is my belly like <laughs> kind of trembling and like what is going on but then there's also this experience of like if you really feel your grief and and feel it like really fully and and allow the emotion you actually say goodbye to the person and actually, that's like, like to a little boy, like, I mean, I lost my stepfather, like, you don't want to let go of that person. Mm. So in a way, yeah. you're like holding on. But but that's so painful to hold on. And, and, and you have to dissociate from your, like, yourself to do that. But to really like, feel it, there is actually the deeper goodbye. And, and you actually in saying goodbye, you will move on. And yeah start to come to peace with the new reality which is actually what you long for that sense of yeah. unifying again but yeah what an intimate process and i just yeah getting to share that with others and uh, discovering that from the inside yeah that's that's what led to that passion yeah yeah and and i think an element for me to add is like uh cuz yeah, we're talking a lot about, uh, say, trauma and and sort of these these intense emotions, you know, uh, 
anger or aggression that are often sort of the gatekeepers for, you know, grief and, and you know, loss and separation and all these, you know, deeply human uh, emotions. Uh, but then, you know, even beyond that, there is there is just, you know, the mystery and the, and the, and the miracle of being alive. Right. And then I, I get the chills again. And then there's like this, this absolutely like, like heightened state where you're like, oh my God, you know, and then, and, and you look around and others are, and, and you see it in their eyes and like, oh, they're there as well. And then, you know, that multiplies. And then now we're in the, in the fucking mystery together where we're underwater, you know what I mean? And then there's just like, well, yeah. you know, and, and I've I've never really encountered it like that anywhere else, with the possible exception of of like when you know, when um, psychedelics kick in and and you're in a group or but but like it's really psychedelic and that's also I think I think a, an element of or like a layer of existence that 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 I was you know fortunate enough to sort of uh, interact with through you know the gift of connection um and that's it's such a beautiful kind of poetic almost feel like a poetic truth of the universe that like because i mean i remember my longing for death it was so intense partly because of the need to recontact myself and heal things and like the disconnection, the difficulty in relationships, especially intimate relationships with uh, women. And and so there was lots of like, and wanting to do well in my business and stuff like that. So it was like, there was a lot of that drive in me, but there was also just this fascination, like reading these mystics and like, they're talking about unifying with the universe yeah. or, yeah. or yeah. being in a causal reality where you dissolve into like love and 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 then energetic experiences that are like yeah yogic and and so it was always like huh? like as if there was this whole like universe going on that I was outside of and it, yeah. and it was kind of painfully outside of and and so yeah then you know meditation retreats you know after 10 days I might just get a little taste of it and but then obviously drugs gave me a kind of access to it but I always knew there was a big cost so you know I'd smoke weed and yeah I'd have all these kind of experiences and there was but then I'd not feel so good the next day and and it feels like a cost is going on and but then psychedelics even more like the an unbelievable experience but it's it's hard to that's it's not relatable to my everyday life i can't do psychedelics while i'm at work or like well maybe i'm microdosing but but it's like but then to think like this poetic truth of the universe actually we can have these heightened experiences we can get access to these deep mysteries yeah. through actually being more honest and together just as we humanly are like not through a special therapeutic spiritual you know you need a special spiritual leader or a therapist who knows how to do it it's like no just human to human interaction a bit of guidance on to how to be a bit more authentic and present but then like then you can just go like it's yeah. there that's what the magic is yeah it's like it's funny you mentioned that i think my experience is sort of similar in the sense that um I wouldn't necessarily call myself a scholar, I think, but I definitely uh, an avid reader, you know, and, and at some point, you know, you discover the, um, let's say, the spiritual library and like one book after the other, all these people, you know, that reach these heightened states. And it, it was always this fucking frustration. It's like either they had this like, you know, the Eckhart Tolle story, basically spontaneous, like, you know, yeah. go to bed depressed, wake up one morning and all of a sudden, you know, Valhalla. It's like, what the fuck? Like, but no roadmap, right? And there was always this, it's like, okay, so cool, but, but what, like, now what do I do, right? If, you know, okay, fucking, you know, pack my bags and, and, and find a cave in the Himalayas, but that's a little, you know, I also have a, you know, happen to have a life here in the West and kind of, kind of want, want that as well. So, you know, what do I do now? So, yeah. Yeah. Then there you, there you go. Like, and were you like me that like the longing 
was so strong in a way that I, I was actually considering that. Yeah, that, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, actually, yeah. But then there's a part of yeah, there's a part of me that loved like my friends who are you know a little bit wild who like to go out and party and then loved doing my sports and like and trying to do well as an entrepreneur. Like the, I love those things as well. But I was like, oh, is that in the way or is that like? there's a lot of like confusion around it so it's such a relief when it was like oh no this is very available and it's right here and actually yeah connecting with other human beings is one of the best gateways yeah, yeah. without the hangover yeah and 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 and, uh, and almost like because you mentioned that before it's like you get to hang out with people that you like and like you know 10 years down the line these people are your friends. Like we're, we're, we're also just a group of friends that when your daughter, you know, celebrates her birthday, everybody shows up and we're just, we're just friends. Right. And that's now, now all of a sudden, you know, again, what the fuck? This is so beautiful. Like these people are my friends and these people that I, that I navigate, you know, the deepest realms of, of, of human, of human consciousness with, wow. You know, like I don't need to actually, you know, move to Nepal and, and become become a hermit and a renunciant and and you know and become a breatharian it's not, it's not it's, yeah it's not necessary it's like and and also i think there's something i'm not i'm not saying it's not possible I, obviously a lot of people did it but there's there is something deeply tragic also in in people you know saying goodbye to to this world with with all its experiences and and we are social animals and all the mm all the beauty in in you know that that arises from you know shared joy and dancing together and and celebration and mm. look you know being in nature etc you know so there's also something deeply yeah like i said deeply tragic in in these you know the classic sort of indian sage that you know becomes becomes skeletal and and like spends all his time or her time you know alone so like wow yeah. Yeah. Well, the, when you share that, what comes to to me is something you said before, where one of one of your challenges, which uh, which is quite common, is like intimate relationships with like you know proper intimate partner, and okay. something that stood out to me, um, like. I often like, you know, I want an honest appraisal of the practice because I obviously have like a lot invested in like my own practice and you know, guiding others. And but it, I, I want to look for patterns. And one, one thing I have seen from people who've done the practice for a long time is they tend to get into quite, uh, I mean, maybe that would have happened anyway, but into rich intimate and kind of loving relationships i remember actually when i was doing psychotherapy training i had an amazing kind of classic psychoanalytic Jungian kind of he was like very straight hitting quite old beard like it was like i was i felt like i was in the picture book kind of psychotherapeutic situation and i remember turning to him once like what is this all about for you and and he said if this goes really well with you, by the end of it, you'll be in an, an intimate relationship. And I was like, huh? I was like expecting like, you know, integration or so. I was like, an intimate relationship? What you but it actually did hit home somehow. And like, yeah, and I think it's quite a journey to actually be able to be really intimate with someone, like really intimate. And I just 100%. wondered what that's been like for you, because now you're yeah with your partner Kim for a while and you bought a house together you got your second child on the way and yeah I mean yeah how's that been yeah like warms my heart or sort of like a film as like a physical opening just you know having this having this uh present with us um but but yeah In that sense, I think, yeah, spiritual practice or or sort of developmental effort uh, can also have this like 
this very concrete sort of almost goal oriented lens it's like i just want to learn how to how to be with people because and i'm i'm using plural on purpose because yeah we're talking about the romantic landscape which which i think in 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 one sense is almost like the most sort of pronounced or or extreme example of like uh, intimate relationships but i come from this place where where essentially i i found uh, human intimacy, you know, could also be in a bar with a with a couple of you know student friends, just deeply challenging. And I, through circling, I noticed like you know I have this this way of like not really looking somebody in the eye, but like like slightly looking past them in order to avoid like the intimacy of eye contact. And I could spend a whole, like I said, I I, I think I spent years of my life essentially in that in that place. So, um. Yeah, learning how to be at ease with people and then it's almost as a result or an extension finding a relationship that uh yeah that or maybe it found me i don't know maybe it's a result of all this inner work but that 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 now you know now i'm there uh and and i want to be very uh very honest and and not to say that you know this relationship is all you know, uh, rosy and 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 uh, and beautiful every day because it's really hard work. And I keep meeting like deeper parts of myself and like like deeply challenged by the relationship and by being you know in this committed container where we wake up the same bed every morning and and there's a you know th- two year old there and all the intensity that it's that it's brought. But the fact that I can that I have a I have an inner platform. For that to sort of land on and for for that sort of dance to to take place on that's huge mm. that's huge because i what i realized is like in previous relationships i there's always back doors for me like I, there's always like again and that's a really painful thing to to acknowledge and i've i've worked through a lot of like like grief work with that but it's always like one one leg in and one leg out like and and now there's this this challenge with somebody that's also uh you know very much into like relating and into uh into the same things that I'm into it's like everything gets you know gets to be seen and and everything gets to, gets to be processed um yeah and that's just that's just I'm incredibly thankful for that and also proud if I'm if I'm honest with you because it it's really like um yeah, look at me now, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can feel. I don't know if it's like proud, but it's like you, you, you know. One of my buddies is like, yeah, doing good. So it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think we could explore for a lot more, but. I want to come to the end here but just before we do close like is there anything you would like to share or uh yeah around your journey or about, about the practice or well i'm just going to go with with the first image that comes up and that is you know it's we're back in the old days now and i think it's it's also nice for people that might be a bit newer to this practice and stuff that it's Yes, there is, you know, the intensity of um, of grief work or, or or of like exploring, say, you know, aggression or disconnection. But um, we used to have these events uh, called All There Is, right, which were also these like three day what's now actually surrendered leadership, I think, sort of the birth of of that particular practice. And and I think you were there, actually, it was in the Mirror Center here in Amsterdam where yeah. we're at this sort of awakening experience, yeah. <laughs> which which really like. Like I'm, I vividly recall, like it just hit me from was like this this beam of energy that just hit me. It was I was connecting with with a with a woman actually that I got romantically involved with for a bit afterwards, also in the circling community. And through that eye contact, it just yeah, like what what people again, like what I what I'd read about often, like Kundalini awakenings or like sudden bursts of of sort of God consciousness or whatever. And and there I was, it's like. And I remember checking with myself, like, is this happening? Yes, it's really happening. Is this happening? Yes, this is really happening, you know. And and then the beauty of circling is like, 
this is really happening. And then looking at, at other people and them seeing in their eyes, like something's going on with this guy, right? And then like sort of the magnetic effect of that. And yeah, I won't go into too much detail about it, but but it stayed with me for weeks, like having this, I don't know, this sense of like being 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 in a very, very, very high state of 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 consciousness where i recall like in the room being able to follow like six seven conversations at the same time and and it's me marveling at my own superpowers all of a sudden is like what the hell is this right <laughs> and that was also just as a result of, of basically sitting together in a room mm. exploring connection with a with a bunch of people that were you know into happened to be into the same thing so um maybe that's also nice for for balance you know what i mean like yeah, that that was also part of the journey for me. Yeah, and it it almost it almost actually in many versions of that just happen all the time. Like it, it's happening right now, just being here mm. with you here, just yeah. being present, and you know it's like the thickening. I was called like the thickening of the air, almost like the my awareness suddenly becomes palatable and I've got a heightened sense of feeling in my body, and, and yeah. The, that always brings this, yeah, inner sense of meaning. That, yeah. It always stayed with me since that um, I call it an altered state, where, where the where the the visual field of, of perception like starts morphing a little bit, and yeah, like like right now you are way more in focus than than anything else, and all that, and and that that has become available also through circling quite easily actually. Um, yeah. when I, when I drop into my body and, and just allow, yeah, just allow full stop really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a nice, uh, yeah, place to round it off and yeah, great to be with you and great that you're now, yeah, you're leading circling weekends so people can check you out in Amsterdam and, uh, yeah. yeah. Being, bringing a lot of transformation in your breath work as well and with your partner yes awesome and uh yeah thanks for this conversation yeah man thanks for having me on and uh yeah also thanks for uh for bringing this whole practice to uh to europe in a certain in a certain sense so yeah. it wouldn't have happened this way without you for sure <laughs> thank you it's been an absolute blessing yeah Cool. Big love, Nils. See you soon.